A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed, and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Imagine, my friends, that we are in that community of early Christians living in Rome. And we get this letter from Paul in which he tells us that we must live and die for the Lord. What can this possibly mean? Well, dying for the Lord does seem pretty clear. For the Romans, it could mean embracing martyrdom, and they understood that all too clearly. But what does it mean to live for the Lord? Well, our readings today explain this way of living very well. The message is loud and clear. We are to live as sisters and brothers in God's human family. There is no misunderstanding possible of what we hear before the gospel. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. We are called to love. A love that is genuine and all-inclusive. In reality, because of our human failings and our selfishness, we fail in our love and hurt one another. When this happens, and it will happen, we must forgive and be forgiven. In Psalm 103, we hear over and over, the Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. We are all sinners, and we need God's forgiveness. As the Lord forgives us, however, we must forgive each other. The wisdom of Sirach reminds us how destructive is the desire for vengeance. Wrath and anger are hateful things. We must not waste time and energy nursing our hurts. As Sirach says, forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. The climax of our message today comes in the Gospel reading from Matthew. Jesus could not be more emphatic about our mandate to forgive. Peter wants to know the limits of forgiveness. Must I forgive my brother seven times? Jesus' answer is crystal clear. Seventy seven times. Now, the number seven, the sum of four and three to the ancients, always meant completeness. So when Jesus says seventy seven times, 
he is saying that there is absolutely no limit on forgiveness. Matthew's account continues with the parable of the unjust steward. Out of mercy and compassion, a king forgives an enormous debt owed to him by one of his servants. Then this very same servant viciously demands payment for a tiny debt owed him by a fellow servant. He does not listen to the debtor's plea for more time. He fails to forgive as he has been forgiven. When the master learns about the unjust steward's failure to forgive, he rescinds his forgiveness of this steward's debt and demands payment. He asks, Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Now the story ends with the unjust servant handed over to the torturers until he pays back the whole debt. And Jesus delivers the punchline. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. We can now return to the question we raised from our Romans reading. What does it mean to live for the Lord? In short, we must forgive one another. Recognizing that we need God's forgiveness, we must forgive. And such forgiveness is not simply a legal procedure. We are to forgive from our hearts. This forgiveness is rooted in our sincere love for all in God's family. How can we love everybody? If we ask people today what it means to love, they will probably tell us it means to have warm feelings of attraction and affection. If we take this definition, however, it's impossible to love everybody. My sisters and brothers, we can't know everybody, and there are some people we have a hard time feeling affection for, and yet we must love them. Love in the gospel is a broader concept. Here, love means more than emotion. It means doing all we can for others so that they will have a full life. It means dedication to justice and mercy in our world. It recognizes the uniqueness of every person as a child of God and that all of us belong to one family. Forgiving from the heart, may the Lord give you peace.